In this lesson, we'll be looking at how to handle events in your React components. First off, start our development server. Okay, we have this running. Handling events in your React component is quite similar with how you handle events in your normal HTML elements. For example, in your normal HTML, you could have a button. Let's say we have another script tag. By the way, I'm in index.html, which if you remember is the root file where React dumps what it renders to the DOM. So let's say in this script tag, I have a function and this function says do something. And the only thing this function is doing is alert React course. Now here in your button, which is click me and you should see that button down here we can easily say on click and then in quotes we can pass this function do something and we'll call the function this is an example of an inline event handler where you have the event and then you have the function you want to call when that event is triggered and now if you should click on click me well you now get this alert that says react course now this similar idea let me comment this can also be applied to your react components and let's go to our button components for example so if you remember in our button component we return a button HTML elements like this. So let's say outside here we have this function do something. You can have the function here or you can have it inside the button component anywhere you'd like it. Now for this button you can now pass your own click but you're not going to pass on click with a lowercase c instead you'll be passing on click with an uppercase c so on is the prefix of the event and then the event itself starts with an uppercase letter and then here you have your equal to and you're not going to use quotes like you do in normal html like this instead what you're going to use is curly bracket if you remember curly bracket allows you to pass javascript stuff and then here we can now pass do something you notice we are not doing do something like this right we are only doing it like this do something i'll explain that in a second but let's first confirm that this actually works so if you remember this button component is used in the pricing card component it is used here and this pricing card component is used three times for the three cards that we have so now if you come here and you click this first button you get this alert it says react course if you click this other button it also says react course and if you click this you also get that alert that says react course so you can see that it's kind of similar with the way you handle events with your html element but there are two things we are doing differently here now the first thing we are doing differently is that the event starts with an uppercase but not just that while we are passing the handler we do not pass parentheses because passing parentheses is going to execute that function coming back to our html example here when we passed do something it doesn't execute do something until you actually trigger the event in this case it is click but in react components passing that parenthesis is actually going to execute that function even when you haven't yet triggered the event and to show you what i mean let me comment this part and just have triggered now if i should open the console of this let me come back here and comment this part so if i should go back here and open the console and now let's say i pass the parenthesis like this you see i haven't even done anything i haven't clicked anything we already get triggered in the console three times one two three these other ones are duplicates but if you remember from the previous lessons i mentioned i was going to explain that later on but yeah we get we get this function called three times because it is used in three components but we haven't even clicked the button now what happens when you click a button well now when you even click a button nothing is happening the function has already been triggered so you're handling events in your react component you want to pass the function name like this without executing the function but then when you trigger the event in this case clicking this button then react is going to execute the function another thing you can do is that you can pass an anonymous function in your curly brackets so you can pass an anonymous function in this case an arrow function where you have your parentheses you have this and then here you can execute do 
something let me take this back to the alert now if you come here and you click a button you actually get the alert so you're probably thinking well what is the difference doing it like this than just having do something like this well when you do it like this again you are passing a function which has not yet been called everything from this point here to this point is an arrow function which has not yet been called and that function is going to be called when this event is triggered and when that function is called then everything in this block is going to be executed which means this is then going to be executed or you can also have something like this using the function keyword by the way i have a video on my channel where i simplify the difference between arrow functions and normal functions i'll link it below if you're interested in checking it out so you can pass it like this let's say before you call do something there is something else you want to do so here you can do something else so now if we should open back the console when i click a button you get do something else in the console before do something is run and then you have this alert so this can be very helpful when you want to do something in line also you don't need to use a function from outside we can also take this from here and instead put it here so in that case we don't even need this function like this and if you click on the button well we still get the same result the reason why you might want to extract your function outside is let's say you wanted to perform this same logic in five places well in that case instead of repeating yourself you can store it in a function outside so i'm just going to take this back to do something in this case like i said we wanted to run this before we call do something and that is why we had to do all of this but if we don't want to run anything then you can just pass your do something like this and this function will be called when this event is triggered it's an example of an inline event handler but if you remember in normal javascript you can also use things like documents dot get element by ID and add event listener. Well, what I mean by this is instead of having this on click do something here, we can take this out, give this button an ID. Let's just call this my ID. And then here in this script part, we can say button equals get element by ID. And then we can pass my ID. And then we can then say button dot add event listener. And we want to listen to the click events. And then here we can pass do something. So if you come here and you still click on this but oh, what oh no 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 sorry we're supposed to have document dot get element by id so if you come here now you click on this button you get this alert so this is another way you can handle events in your normal javascript and you can also apply the same idea to your react components so here we can take out this part and let's say we come here and we now add this document dot get element by id and event list now well if we try to run this we now get an error and if we check the error it says that cannot read properties of null reading add event listener and what is happening here is that we are trying to get elements by id of my id for this button but the problem is that this has not yet been rendered on the dom let's have a quick look at the dom if i go to the elements tab here you see we have div id of root but our button is nowhere to be found here so this has not yet been rendered that on the DOM. So when you do document.get element by ID, you pass this ID, button is going to be null. And because here we are now trying to do null.add event listener click, that is why we are getting this error. So how would you solve this? Well, this is where you would use a React hook like use effect. And don't worry about hooks for now. As we progress in this course, we're going to learn how hooks works. But I just want to quickly show you how this works. So you have use effects, which I am importing from React. And then in this use effect don't worry about the syntax for now i just want to quickly show you something i can now push these two things in here now what this block is doing here is that before you run this this would first be rendered so this is running after this has been rendered and now if you click on this button you get this um, if you also click on this button well you don't get that because if you remember with html your ids are supposed to be unique multiple elements should not have multiple ids but in this case these three elements have the same ids and it shouldn't be so so that is why only this button triggers the alert but other buttons do not trigger the alert again don't worry about this use effect code 
code that we have here i just wanted to show you other ways in which you can handle events but how you would often see events handled is in line where you have the event you want to handle and then you can pass do something so i'm just going to take my id off so far we've been looking at the click event but in html there are a lot of events you can handle for example with inputs fields you can handle the on change events with forms you can handle the on submit event and there are a lot more events also when handling events in html you can do things like event dot prevent default or stop propagation you can also apply that same concept here so when you pass a function an event handler to an event that function is going to receive as a first argument the event object in this case we didn't use it but you can also choose to use the event object and first off let's do console log event so if i should open my console again and now i click this button well we get the alert but you can also see the event object so you can also come here to do something like event.prevent default or event.stop propagation or you can do anything with that event object now that you might want to do is that you might want to pass other arguments to this function let's say this do something function receives an argument called message we're going to take this part then you want to do a lot and you want to pass that message here because you want to pass this here what you can now do is you're going to have your anonymous function and in this anonymous function you can pass do something now this anonymous function is going to receive the event react is going to pass that event to the function when this event is actually triggered so here in your do something you can now pass this event object and then you can pass your message and let's say the message is my message something simple like this now if you click on this you get my message because my message is passed to do something and do something alerts message same thing for the other buttons now what if you are not interested in this event object well if you're not interested in this object you can take it out so you know that your function only receives one argument and then here we can also take it out just pass one argument to do something and since we're passing one argument to do something well we don't need to worry about the event object anymore we just create an anonymous function like this and then we call do something with that argument for me i use arrow functions a lot but i'm just trying to show you that you can also use normal functions for this kind of thing remember again you don't want to pass do something my message directly to the curly bracket because by using parentheses you're already executing the function and that is not what you want instead you want to wrap this into another function that react is going to call when the on click event is triggered i'm just going to take this back to do something and I'm not going to worry about a message i'm just going to pass my message now one more thing i want to show you in this lesson is that with the on click event in this case this works for the native button element because native elements in html by default receive a lot of events which you can handle do but let's say i comment this part here on click do something and then i come to pricing card and for this button component which is a custom component i created let's say i try to handle an on click event here so in this on click i'm just going to do alert hello now let's say i have something like this well if i come here and i click this button we don't get any alert hello why is this the case well that is because this is a custom component so it doesn't receive any event the only thing that receives an event here is the native html element but what if you want to be able to handle a click event on this button well this is where you can use props so what we can do here now is that this button component we can tell this button component to receive an on click event or we can even call it anything let's call it when button is clicked we're telling this component that it re it should expect a when button is clicked prop we can also come to our type here to say when button is clicked should be prop types dot func and it should be required so it should be of the function type now if we come to our console we should already get some errors that says field prop type when button is clicked is marked as required in button but its value is undefined in the previous lesson we looked at prop types so now we can already get this warning so going back to this pricing card now i can now have when button is clicked 
when button is clicked for this prop i'm passing this function and what this function does when it executed is that it does alert hello but now even if i click on the button nothing is happening i don't see my alert yet again that is because this component does not receive any event what receives an event here is this native button element so what i can now do is that i can say when you click on this native button element since i know that it receives such events as a handler to this event i can now pass when button is clicked on click is for the button native element the function that handles this event is when button is clicked and where is button is clicked coming from well it is coming as an input a prop into this button component and here in pricing card this is where i have the prop and then i pass the handling function so this is actually the handling function which is going to be used here but you can see how we had to pass down that information through props so now in this pricing card if i should click on this button now we now get this alert same thing for this button same thing for this button but what i want you to pay attention to here is that this button component is not what is actually receiving this event what is receiving the event is this native button but then by receiving this event we can now pass a handling function from here to here and now what we can also do is that instead of doing alert hello we can even do something like alert and then we pass the card dot label remember card dot label is coming from app.gsx where we loop through all the cards and the labels are coming from here so now if you click on this button you see we get startup if you click on this button you get pro and if you click on this button you now get enterprise and this is how you can handle your events in your react components and this lesson might look a bit advanced from the previous lessons we have been looking at so i definitely recommend that you also practice with this test out how different events works and try to handle those events yourself but overall i'm hoping that this video helps you to understand how you can handle events in your react component this is something you're going to be doing a lot as you build react applications either you're handling a form submit event a button click event sometimes you have input fields as a user is typing you want to trigger certain functions you're going to be handling events a lot so it's very important that you understand them as usual you can find a link to the code that we used in this lesson in the video description now moving forward in this course we're going to be deploying our react application so that it can be visible by other people through a link